So for today's mouthpiece video, we are going to be comparing principal trombone signature mouthpieces. We have eight different mouthpieces up here, and we are going to be attempting to play Bolero eight straight times on a different mouthpiece each time to see kind of what the sound change is like and what different principles models sound like on my horn and my face and setup. Quick introduction to the mouthpieces. This first one is a Greg Black 5G L with a .277 backbore, commonly called the John Kitzman model. John being the principal trombonist of the Dallas Symphony and a wonderful player and teacher for many years. Next up we have Sasha Romero's Li Brass mouthpiece. This has one of the most aesthetic designs I've ever seen on a mouthpiece. It just looks beautiful. And uh, Sasha of course plays principal with the Metropolitan Opera. Then we have Ian Bousfield, who was formerly principal at the LSO in Vienna Philharmonic, his S mouthpiece. I'm going to keep both of these little rubber bands on it. I find that uh, taking one or both of them off makes it a little bit more articulation heavy, and I really want to go for that more orchestral length and width sound at the moment. <clears throat> After that, we have this really cool, I love the shank on this thing. It has such a cool little, like, antique vibe. But this is a Hammond Design mouthpiece custom made for Steve Witzer, who for many years played principal with the Cleveland Orchestra as the assistant principal and also played principal with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Then we kind of have our New York School of Mouthpieces. This is a Griego Alessi 7F, kind of the smallest model in like the Griego Alessi line. After that we have Carl Mazio, who got this mouthpiece while he was studying with Joe Alessi and used it to win principal of the Buffalo Philharmonic. And then we have Joe Alessi, principal of the New York Philharmonic, his new Lasky 60 symphonic line. He generally uses the 67, but I like the 60 for myself. And more in line with what he has used in the past, we also have this Griego Alessi 1D, which is the biggest of the lot and definitely the heaviest too. Alright, so, Bolero. Let's get started with the Kitzman model. We'll kind of move um, small to large, and hopefully, hopefully I get it each time. We'll see how close it gets. <clears throat> Next up, we have the Sasha Romero Signature Li Brass Mouthpiece. This, I think the specs are on the smaller side from the mouthpieces up here, but the feel is very expansive, which is a really interesting kind of um, way that it goes. Very comfortable mouthpiece to do vibrato on, and a very, very, very interesting feel to it compared to pretty much anything else up there. After that, we have the Ian Bousfield S model, keeping both rubber bands on. Why not get crazy with it? <clears throat> Thank you. 
feedback is always different from the player being behind the horn from in front of the horn, but this to me feels like one of the mouthpieces out of the lot up here that would like cut the most, have the most direction through the back of the whole orchestra. Very cool sound. And now we have Steve Witzer's Hammond design that was made for him. So this kind of, Hammonds are known for having kind of more open throats to them. And otherwise this feels a lot like um, a 5G or a 4G Bach that can just take a little bit more air and um, has a certain type of sweetness to the sound, I believe, from what I remember. Let's find out. mouthpiece I find that as I get lower on the mouthpiece I have to keep remembering to open and kind of make sure that the air almost comes up from under into the mouthpiece as opposed to some other usual feel I have when I'm playing in that register and now we have the Griego Alessi 7F one of the smaller of um, Alessi's personal lines observation on that one the sound makes me feel like I need more air than I do and actually that somewhat confused my breathing a little bit compared to the other mouthpieces I kind of forgot where my usual breathing points are because the feedback of sound I was getting was a lot more expansive than I think the energy I was putting in air wise it's very intriguing next we have Carl Mazio's custom Greg Black made when he was studying with Joe Alessi and before he won his Buffalo principal audition This is the mouthpiece I played on uh, during my undergrad and immediately after. I'm very thankful to Carl, um, who has since passed away, that he gave me his own personal mouthpiece in that first year that I studied with him when he had just left the orchestra. Very special piece to me. Uh, next up we have Joe Alessi's Lasky 60 Orchestra model. I've tried the 55 and the 67. I find that the 60 for orchestral sound um, kind of matches what I think I'm looking for out of this style of mouthpiece the best. Um, generally, I go between using kind of the 60 for second trombone parts and the 55 for first trombone parts. For today, I just want to get a kind of a feel going from smaller to larger, so we're going to give Bolero a good old try on the larger, well, the medium size one, the 26.0 Lasky 60. <clears throat> Thank you. 
being on the larger side of the mouthpieces, as we get lower, it starts to feel more and more comfortable, like it really comes into its own. And finally, you have the Griego 1D mouthpiece. Um, definitely the largest one I'll be playing today and the largest mouthpiece I own. I always feel like um, if there's ever a piece where I'm playing with a large orchestra and I just really need to like steamroll over some sections, uh, this is the one I would use. All right. Let's see how it sounds like on Bolero. Let's see how my face feels like on Bolero too, using this thing. different principal mouthpieces. Let me know which ones you liked or which ones you didn't like in the comments. Let me know where I messed up my rhythm or maybe cracked that first B flat, which I think was on three of them. Also, if you're feeling like it. And thanks for listening.